Well, we're back again for week 12 of the uh, uh, 1970 NFL uh, season replay. So, uh, a few surprises. Uh, we will go through the week 12 schedule uh, and uh, see what the uh, results are and then look at the standings and league leaders. Uh, I think when I said, you know, some surprises, obviously, uh, I don't think anybody saw Dallas at 2 8 and 1. Uh, losers, I, I mean, they, they win a game, they lose two or three. They're now on a four game losing streak. Uh, and they're playing the uh, the Redskins today in the Cotton Bowl. So uh, hopefully things are looking up uh, for Dallas. Uh, St. Louis is uh, the strongest team in 1970 so far with a 9-2 and record. Uh, they just had their uh, second loss a couple weeks ago. They got a win last week. And uh, they're going to be with uh, the entire stadium playing uh, Detroit here. Cleveland, that's a bit of a surprise too at 3 7 and 1. Uh, they weren't that bad in real life, but uh, in the replay, they've had some um, issues on offense uh, with the quarterback position that has affected them. Uh, their, their quarterbacks have not really got on track, and uh, that has, a, has affected their uh, ability to win games. So we have Philly uh, at 9 and 2 going into uh, Baltimore to play the Colts. Washington, of course, playing Dallas. St. Louis, again, at Detroit. Cleveland is uh, traveling to the Astrodome to play the 2-9 uh, and nine Houston Oilers. Denver uh, will be traveling to Kansas City, and that's going to be a wet game. Uh, it's uh, raining in uh, Kansas City. Let's see how that affects uh, the teams. New Orleans, uh, one of the uh, one of two teams that are one and ten. They're playing their division rivals, the Los Angeles Rams, in the uh, Coliseum in L.A. Uh, Boston, the other one and ten team, they are going to be heading down to Miami, and it's going to be a uh, rainy, rainy day in the Orange Bowl. Uh, again, on that astroturf, you can aquaplane on that; it gets real slick. Uh, we'll see how uh, how the surface and the weather conditions affect the game there. Chicago heads up to Metropolitan Stadium to play the uh, first place Minnesota Vikings, and that will be in the snow. So we're in the snow season. Uh, have been for the past couple weeks. So we've seen some snow games uh, in the uh, upper Midwest and in the East. Oakland uh, will go to Shea and take on the Jets. Both these teams have a uh, 7-3-1 record. Oakland, they're, they're on a four-game win streak. Uh, New York, uh, losers have won uh, so far. Buffalo will travel to uh, play their interstate rivals, the Giants. Green Bay travels to Pittsburgh to take on the uh, Steelers, and that'll be in the rain as well. Cincinnati travels out west to uh, warmer temperatures and clear skies in San Diego to take on the Chargers. And then uh, we have Atlanta uh, taking on San Francisco and Keysar Stadium. Good conditions there for football. So let's go to the highlights. First game, Philly at Baltimore Memorial Stadium. Windy day there. Um, that would generally indicate if it's a windy game in Memorial Stadium, it's going to be a, uh, quite dusty. So you're going to see, or you would see, dust clouds coming up off the field because uh, Memorial Stadium, uh, they had the Baltimore Orioles, Orioles that would play there. So they have the uh, infield dirt on the field and uh, in the windy conditions there, uh, if it's not raining, is it, it could get really dusty. So let's uh, go to Baltimore and check out the highlights. So we got 10-11 in the first, and Jim O'Brien for uh, the Colts. Field goal attempt, and he uh, misses that one. That was a 29-yard attempt, uh, no good. So score 0-0 here in the first. Uh, 
Now Philadelphia driving down the field with 4.53. Uh, and uh, Jerry Logan picks off Norm Sneed. Norm Sneed had a horrible day with uh, interceptions last week, and that continues. Minute 36 in the second, and uh, Unitas connects with uh, John Mackey, the uh, awesome tight end for uh, the Colts to take the Colts up 7-0. We're in the fourth quarter now, and Unitas hits uh, Eddie Hinton with 14-20 left in the game. Touchdown, Baltimore. So we have a 14-0 game. Uh, Unitas late in the fourth quarter finds uh, Jimmy Orr, seven-yard touchdown pass to the veteran receiver. 21-0. Late in the fourth, Sneed back to pass, and he is sacked. Ted Hendricks, the mad stork, he uh, storms in and gets Nord, uh, Norm Sneed in a sack, stalling that drive. We're, uh, again, still in the fourth. And uh, O'Brien misses his second uh, field goal attempt of the day. Winds are swirling in, uh, in Baltimore. 245 left in the fourth. And uh, Snead completes a 20-yard uh, pass to uh, Ben Hawkins to keep their drive rolling. And with uh, 21 seconds left in the game, uh, time runs out on uh, Philly. Philadelphia gets uh, beat 21 to nothing by the Colts. Johnny Unitas is your MVP. 190 yards and three touchdowns today. Looking at the uh, final game stats again, uh, Baltimore pretty much uh, dominated this contest. Looking at uh, Philadelphia, Norm Sneed, 13-25, 156 yards, no touchdowns and interception. Uh, another subpar game for the uh, veteran quarterback, Norm Sneed. Uh, rushing, uh, the Philadelphia rushing attack, they, they made some yards today. Cyril Pinder got 60 yards. Uh, Tom Wichnick, he uh, got 41 Uh, the uh, aerial attack by Philly, not much to write home about. Uh, Harold Jackson, he had 51 yards to uh, lead the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in receiving. No touchdowns, obviously. And here's the uh, total offense numbers for Philly today in a uh, disappointing performance against the uh, Baltimore Colts. Looking at defense, uh, Tim Rosovich, eight tackles. No sacks, no interceptions, no fumble recoveries for the uh, Philly defense. Who really didn't do much to uh, stop Johnny Unitas and the Colts today. Uh, obviously, uh, no chance of kicking today for uh, Mark Mosley. Uh, Bill Bradley, uh, six punts today. Looking at kick returns, uh, Nelson and Wallach, only uh, two returns for Nelson. And on punt returns, only a fair catch for Billy Wallach. Now let's look at Baltimore. Uh, your MVP, Johnny Unitas, 18 out of 30, 190 yards and three touchdown passes. Uh, no interceptions, great day for uh, the immortal Johnny Unitas. Uh, the rushing attack today, uh, Bulash and Jerry Hill, uh, they were running the ball. Bulash, 84 yards. And uh, this is where Baltimore did the damage through the air. Ray Perkins, 52 yards. Roy Jefferson, 41 yards. And then you have uh, Jimmy Orr, one catch uh, for a touchdown. Eddie Hinton, he had a touchdown. And uh, John Mackey. Uh, the great tight end, a touchdown. Here's your total offense numbers for the Colts and their victory over the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Looking at defense, Mike Curtis, uh, good day for him. Nine tackles and a sack. Ted Hendricks, he got a sack. Bubba Smith, Roy Hilton, Ray May, 
all got sacks uh, on Norm Sneed, making it a miserable day for the uh, Philadelphia quarterback. Five sacks total for the uh, Colts today. Uh, Jerry Logan uh, got the interception. Jim O'Brien, uh, well, su surprisingly missed two field goals. Normally he's very capable, but uh, it was a real windy day in uh, Memorial Stadium. So I'm sure that affected uh, his ability to make those field goals. David Lee's punting numbers. Jim Duncan and Ron Garden uh, kick returns. And uh, punt returns, Ron Garden, uh, he had one 12-yard uh, return, uh, two fair catches. So we're leaving Baltimore where uh, the Colts uh, put a uh, 21 to nothing beating on the uh, Philadelphia Eagles who are struggling through the 1970 season as they did in real life. Now we move off to uh, a classic uh, old time NFL um, rivalry Washington and Dallas. They're in the Cotton Bowl. Good day uh, for football in the Cotton Bowl. 74 degrees, very little wind, clear skies. Let's uh, check out the highlights. Well, Kurt Knight is lining up a field goal with 655 in the first, and that is good to get Washington on the board 3-0. 341 in the first. Jurgensen hands off to Larry Brown, and Larry Brown is in for the touchdown. 11-yard touchdown run. Uh, Washington is now up uh, what looks like 10 to nothing. At the end of the first quarter, Craig Morton back to pass. He finds Lance Rensel. The defender falls down, and uh, Rensel walks into the end zone. 22-yard touchdown pass, Morton to Rensel. The Cowboys uh, get on the board, and they're uh, going to score here in the second quarter. Dwayne Thomas, uh, five-yard rushing touchdown for the Cowboys to make it a 14-10 game. Dallas, uh, still in the second quarter near the uh, end of the first half. And uh, Kurt Knight tries a long 45-yard attempt, and that goes wide left. With five seconds left, Craig Morton back to pass. We're at the end of the uh, first half. He heaves it downfield, and he hits Reggie Rucker with the bomb. 44-yard bomb from Morton to Reggie Rucker. Touchdown, Dallas. Looks like they've found their offense today. 21-10, Dallas. We're in the third quarter, and uh, Kurt Knight punches a 17-yard uh, field goal through to give Washington uh, 13 points on the day. We're in the fourth. And uh, there's uh, Mike Clark. He misses a 14-yard field goal. Score remains 21-13. And I think that is going to be your game, folks. In the uh, Cowboys, all of a sudden, their offense, the, with the offense we've been uh, looking for, shows up today. Uh, it's unfortunately too little too late in the season for them. But, uh, again... Dallas 21-13 victors over the, the Washington Redskins at home. Craig Morton, good day for him. 20-25, 247 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, boy, I wish, you know, looking at uh, the Cowboys this season, they have been just mired in an offensive slump. And uh, if Morton could have been performing like this earlier in the season, I think... Uh, it would just be uh, a, a, obviously a much better record. Uh, domination by Dallas today in the Cotton Bowl against the Redskins. Sonny Jerkinson was 15 to 29, 151 yards, no TDs, no interceptions. Unspectacular day for the uh, Washington quarterback. Larry Brown only 69 yards on the ground, in a, but a touchdown. Receiving, uh, Charlie Taylor got 73 yards. 
total offense for the uh, Washington Redskins in their loss to the uh, Dallas Cowboys. It looks like uh, the offensive explosion by the Cowboy offense also uh, energized the uh, Doomsday defense, and they they uh, made it tough for Washington to get rolling. Looking at uh, Washington's defense, Floyd Peters, six tack, uh, tackles. Uh, John Hoffman, he got a sack today. Kurt Knight missed a field goal. Oh, that uh, um, hit his uh, extra points, but uh, just couldn't make up the difference. Mike Bragg, six punts today. Uh, 45 yarder was the longest one for him. Vactor and Harris uh, on kick returns. Harris and Roberts returning punts for the Redskins in the loss to the Cowboys. Well, I'm interested to see these Dallas uh, offensive numbers because they've been really awful for the last several games. Craig Morton, 20 to 25, 80% completion rate, 247 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, great quarterback rating. Calvin Hill, he uh, had a halfback pass that was completed for 11 yards. They were hitting on all cylinders, it looks like. Calvin Hill, big day on the ground, 94 yards for him. Dwayne Thomas, 54 yards and a touchdown. Lance Renzel, 119 yards uh, receiving. Reggie Rucker, 56. Bullet Bob Hayes, 46 yards. Uh, Rucker and Renzel with touchdowns. And uh, this is, the, I think, the best performance the uh, Cowboys offense has had in the replay. Looking at uh, Dallas's defense, Dave Edwards, eight tackles. George Andrew, he, he got the sack. Mike Clark missed a uh, field goal. Ron Whidbey, he had six punts. Longest was 44. Four of the six punts were inside the 20, and three of those were fair caught. Margene Atkins and Dwayne Thomas uh, kick returns today in the victory over the uh, Washington Redskins. Bob Hayes and Mel Renfro uh, returning punts. Bob Hayes, 34-yard uh, punt return was the longest he had of the day. Well, the Cowboys, uh, could this be uh, where they start to string together some wins and uh, maybe with, combined with some losses uh, with the other teams in the uh, NFC East can make a run for the playoffs? It is late. We're in uh, week 12. There's only a couple weeks left in the season. I don't think that's going to pan out for the Cowboys, unfortunately. Too little, too late for them. So we uh, leave uh, the Cotton Bowl and head off to uh, Tiger Stadium. It's windy Tiger Stadium. 34 degrees, so it's a chilly day there. Uh, where the Cardinals and uh, Lions face off. 7.20 in the first. Jimmy Hart under uh, center for the Cardinals. He hits uh, John Gilliam. And uh, the receiver fumbles the ball. Detroit recovers on the 22. In the second quarter now, Greg Lander hands off to Mel Farr. He can't even get around the corner. He's hit and coughs the ball up. Cardinals recover at the 42. Still in the second, Errol Mann will try a longish field goal. And that one looks good. Detroit gets on the scoreboard first, three to nothing in the second quarter. We're in the third quarter now. Hart back to pass for the Cardinals. Looking downfield, he's under no pressure. He hits Gilliam and uh, John Gilliam is uh, Gone, touchdown, St. Louis. Big touchdown strike, 74 yards, Hart to Gilliam. Gets St. Louis on the board. They missed the extra point, 6-3 St. Louis. Errol Mann, a chance to tie. 
Oh, and he's wide left. 46-yard attempt uh, in the wind. Goes uh, wide left. We're now in the fourth quarter. Errol Mann again trying to uh, tie the game up. And he does. He gets a 42-yarder uh, and uh, ties the game six apiece. Late in the fourth, chip shot by Errol Mann is good. That's going to put the uh, Lions up 9-6 to six late in the game. And that will be your final score in a very tight game, a battle of field goals, uh, with the exception of uh, St. Louis getting that touchdown. 9-6, Detroit beats the uh, best team in football uh, up to this point in the uh, replay. Mike Lushi is your uh, MVP 12 tackles. Looking at the stats, uh, Detroit, a little bit more purple in their column, but again, a close contest. Looked like a defensive struggle. Jimmy Hart in a losing effort, 13 to 29, 161 yards and a touchdown. That uh, 74 yard strike to uh, John Gilliam. MacArthur Lane, 29 yards. It looks like St. Louis really just couldn't get anything going on the ground against uh, the Lions front four. Uh, John Gilliam, big day for him, 107 yards, 74. That came on that uh, touchdown strike from Jim Hart. Total offense uh, on a day where St. Louis could only get uh, one score. St. Louis defense, Don Parrish, nine tackles. Jamie Rivers, uh, he picked up a sack. Chuck Walker, he recovered the uh, Melfar fumble. Jim Bakken, he uh, missed the one extra point. Otherwise, he had no other opportunities to get in the game. La Charette, uh, busy punting today, 10 punts. On kick returns, Pittman and La Charette. Oh, so, uh, with punt returns, La Charette and Johnny Rowland. So let's look at Detroit in their uh, victory over the Cardinals. Greg Landry, uh, another kind of typical line for Greg Landry. Not much going on through the air with him. 5 of 16, 70 yards, did not turn the ball over. Uh, Alti Taylor, Mel Farr, the one-two punch for the Lions on the ground. Uh, they uh, ground out uh, 104 yards for Mel Farr on the ground and, and uh, 82 yards for Alti Taylor, that one-two punch for, uh, for Detroit. Uh, again, not much in the air for uh, Detroit. Larry Walton, 64 yards. The Detroit offensive attack is very one-dimensional, which uh, I don't know how far they're going to get with that in the playoffs. Uh, total offense all on the ground for Detroit. Uh, Mike Lucci is your MVP with 12 tackles. Busy day for the middle linebacker of the uh, Detroit Lions. Uh, Joe Robb, he had a sack. Wayne Walker he, uh, recovered a fumble. Errol Mann uh, missed a field goal, but uh, he hit his uh, other three, and he was the uh, to he was total offense for the uh, Lions today. All of their scoring came on the leg of uh, Errol Mann. Herman Weaver seven punts today. All of them were inside the 20. Williams and Eddie uh, returning kicks. Uh, Bobby Williams, only two returns. One of those was a 35-yarder. Lem Barney, Nick Eddie returning punts. Lots of fair catches. So, 
We have uh, Detroit getting a narrow victory at home against the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Now well, moving on to uh, Houston, where Houston is hosting the Cleveland Browns. 234 in the first, uh, Charlie Johnson uh, evades the sack and uh, throws a uh, interception. Freddie Sumner, uh, Summers picks that one off, uh, but he fumbles the ball. Minute 13 in the second now, and Charlie Johnson hands, oh, he throws to Joe Dawkins, and Joe Dawkins scampers into the end zone. One yard touchdown, uh, Johnson to Dawkins. Houston up seven, nothing, Bill Nelson. He's looking in the end zone. Oh, and he has Leroy Kelly wide open. Four-yard touchdown pass. That'll tie the score at 7-7. Uh, We're now in the third. Long field goal for Cleveland. And they uh, miss. That is a miss from 39 yards. Score remains tied at 7. Minute 32 left in the game. Johnson back to pass. And he hits, oh, he hits Reed. Reed fumbles the ball. Uh, Cleveland recovers at the uh, 12. Alvin Reed fumbles the ball and kills that drive. Well, a 7-7 tie in uh, Houston. Doesn't do either one of those teams any good. Jack Gregory is your uh, MVP. He had three sacks today. Looking at the game stats. Houston uh, came out ahead in more categories, but uh, not in the uh, final score. Bill Nelson's day, 19-34, 226 yards and a touchdown. So a good day for the uh, veteran quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. And uh, nothing really happening on the ground for the Browns again. That uh, running attack of both Scott and Leroy Kelly, they just are not finding much traction to, uh, to get yards on the ground. And that's forcing uh, Nelson to pass more. Speaking of that, uh, big day for Homer Jones, 86 yards. Leroy Kelly, he had a touchdown catch. Gary Collins and Fairhooker each got 52 yards of uh, receiving yards today. Total offense for Cleveland, uh, the more, majority of it is in the air. Could not get the running game going against uh, the Houston defense. Looking at the Cleveland defense, uh, Billy Andrews leads with nine tackles. Jerry Shrek had a sack, and then we had Jack Gregory, three sacks today. Uh, Freddie Summers picked off uh, Charlie Johnson. Mike Howell recovered uh, the fumble. Uh, Cogcroft, his uh, day kicking. And his day punting. Now looking at uh, kick returns, uh, Morrison and Homer Jones. Oh, uh, Houston kept it away from Homer Jones, which only gave uh, Reese Morrison one chance to return a ball, and that was for 16 yards. On punt returns, Morrison and Schoen. And that is uh, player stats for the Cleveland Browns. Houston. Charlie Johnson, 21 of 42, 259 yards, a TD and an interception. He was sacked four times. Three of those were by Gregory. Uh, Richardson, good day uh, running the, the ball, 71 yards. Jerry Levias, uh, he uh, picked up 103 yards receiving today. Lone touchdown was that uh, one yard toss to uh, Joe Dawkins. Houston's total offense numbers in the uh, tie with the Cleveland Browns. 
On defense, uh, Kenny Houston, nine tackles. Pat Holmes, he had a sack, no interceptions, no fumble recoveries. Roy Jarella, he uh, only had one uh, extra point attempt. He made that. Spike Jones, busy day punting. Levias and Benny Johnson returning kicks. Not much there. And really, uh, only a couple fair catches for Jerry Levias returning punts. Well, 7 7 tie in the uh, Astrodome between the uh, Oilers and the Browns. Now we move on to Rainy Municipal Stadium. Uh, the uh, Chiefs are not in Arrowhead yet. That's uh, that's coming. So they're in uh, Municipal Stadium. It's a little chilly. Not much wind. Uh, it's going to be damp uh, and rainy for uh, Denver and Kansas City today. 11-20 in the first, and we have... Uh, Pete Liskey handing off to uh, Bobby Anderson. Bobby Anderson turns the corner, gets the first down and fumbles the ball. Jim Kearney grabs it for the uh, Chiefs and returns it back to the 27-yard uh, line. Still in the first, Jan Stenerud, the soccer-style kicker for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. He uh, punches that one through, put the Chiefs on the board, three to nothing. Still in the first. Liskey for the Broncos. He's back to pass. He's looking and he finds Jim Marsalis. Long jersey. And uh, Marsalis is in for the touchdown. An interception uh, returned for a touchdown by uh, Jimmy Marsalis. And that puts Kansas City up 10 0. Liskey. Can he get Kansas City uh, going? And no, the drive ends in an interception in the end zone by uh, Bobby Bell. Still in the second, Len Dawson. Man in motion, he's looking, and uh, that one slipped out of his hand, and uh, Chip Myrtle grabs it. Now Liskey, can he uh, get him to uh, get some points on that uh, turnover? And he does, two yard touchdown run by the uh, fullback, Bobby Anderson. 10 to seven, Kansas City, still in the second quarter. Dawson, he's looking. Oh, no, uh, and uh, Cornell Gordon grabs that just as uh, as uh, Dawson was releasing it. Liskey driving the uh, Broncos down. And Emmett Thomas picks that off in the end zone, and he takes it out uh, to about the 10-yard uh, line. Weather is apparently affecting uh, how, how they're handling the ball. Len Dawson hits Ed Podolak, and the normally sure-handed Podolak, he fumbles the ball. Second quarter, we're at the end of the uh, first half. Dawson looking, and Don Washington scoops that one out of the air. Another turnover by uh, Len Dawson. Pete Liskey with 36 seconds left uh, in the first half, and he uh, is picked off by Willie Lanier. We're now at the end of the uh, second quarter, and another interception. Cornell Gordon picks off Len Dawson again. Uh, they are having a hard time uh, with, a, with the wet football here. You were in the third quarter, Podolak... He fumbles again. It is a, uh, a game of turnovers. We're now late in the fourth. Liskey hands off to Floyd Little, and Floyd Little doesn't fumble the ball, and he uh, gets into the end zone. Nine-yard touchdown run. And that will give Denver the 14-10 uh, lead here late in the fourth. And in a game... Uh, basically a game of turnovers. The Broncos beat the uh, first place uh, AFC West leaders, K 
Kansas City Chiefs 14-10 in the rain. Uh, it just didn't seem like either team could get much of a feel for a wet ball. Uh, and that resulted in some turnovers. But uh, Floyd Little, your MVP, 124 yards on the ground. Here's your final game stats. Not much going for Kansas City. Better completion uh, percentage. And Denver's, uh, let's look at their numbers. Uh, Pete Liskey, 11-29, 146 yards. He turned the ball over four times for an abysmal quarterback rating. Can't wait to see what Lenny Dawson's numbers look like. It was a bad day for him as well. Floyd Little again, 124 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Bobby Anderson, he added an additional touchdown. But again, fumbles, fumbles and interceptions today. Fumbles lost to uh, the opposing team and uh, costly interceptions on drives uh, where they could get points. Receiving Al Denson, 95 yards. He leads the way for Denver. Total offense for Denver, pretty much uh, Floyd Little. On defense, Cal Cunningham, eight tackles and a sack. Rich Jackson, he uh, turned up big today. Two sacks for the uh, veteran uh, defender for the uh, Denver Orange Crush defense. Interception by Dave Washington, two of them by Cornell Gordon, one by Chip Myrtle. And then uh, fumble recoveries by Cunningham and uh, Dave Washington. Total of one, three, four, five, six turnovers by Kansas City. You're not going to win a game where you turn the uh, ball over six times. Outfield only uh, extra points for him today. Billy Van Heusen, uh busy day with seven punts. Billy Thompson and Bobby Anderson uh, returning kicks. Only 25 yards was the longest kick return that uh, the Broncos had. And in punt returns, Thompson and Floyd Little. Uh, two returns, one of them was a, was a fair caught. Now let's look at the Kansas City numbers. Len Dawson had an equally horrible day. He and Pete Liskey struggled in the uh, rain. 13-29, 130 yards, four interceptions for Len Dawson. Sacked three times. Ed Podolak. His day, uh, 54 yards uh, on the ground, and again, uh, gave away two fumbles to uh, to Denver. Dawson fumbled, but it was recovered by Kansas City. Lots of turnovers. Receiving numbers, not much uh, going on through the air for Kansas City today. Uh, Frank Pitts, 53 yards. Total offense for Kansas City. Both teams were really kind of stinking it up. Looking at uh, Kansas City defense, Jim Lynch, eight tackles. And uh, then we get into uh, Buck Buchanan. He got a sack, but again, one, two, three, four. Uh, interceptions, uh, fumble recovery. And an, and an interception by Jimmy Marsalis that went back for a, a touchdown. Jan Stenerud, uh, another good day for uh, the veteran soccer style kicker for Kansas City. Gerald Wilson, another good day for him. Uh, always a solid uh, punter in his day. Holmes and Podolak, uh, Robert Holmes, he uh, only had one kick return, and uh, that was for 31 yards. At Podolak, 14-yard uh, return for him, but uh, fair catches for Ian Willie Mitchell. 
And, and that will wrap up a, uh, a festival of turnovers. Uh, Denver comes out uh, victorious 14-10. All right, so we uh, now have uh, Los Angeles uh, hosting New Orleans. This looks like a mismatch. 4-0-3 in the first, da uh, David Ray lining up a uh, field goal, and he makes that. Uh, David Ray struggled all season with field goals, but a uh, 15-yard attempt, he gets that through today. 3-0 uh, uh, LA. Uh, still in the first quarter, Billy Kilmer looking downfield. He has good protection. And uh, Barrington catches it, is hit, and fumbles the ball. Los Angeles recovers at the 32. We're now in the second quarter. Roman Gabriel, he's looking. He finds uh, Jack Snow in the end zone for a touchdown. That'll extend Los Angeles' uh, lead 10-0. Still in the second quarter. Gabriel has him on the doorstep. He hands off to Willie Ellison. And the uh, running back for the Rams, he uh, runs it in from three yards out. And the Rams are uh, pulling away here. Still in the second. And uh, Gabriel error mails a pass. Doug Wyatt intercepts and returns it to the New Orleans 46. A minute eight in the first half and uh, New Orleans trying a field goal. That one is through Tom Dempsey. He uh, makes the 32-yard field goal, makes the score 17-3. We're now in the uh, third quarter. Billy Kilmer is being chased, and uh, he is sacked by Deacon Jones in the end zone. Uh, Billy Kilmer, I'm sure it's been a rough day for him. David Ray. Misses a short field goal. And again, the woes of uh, David Ray continue when it comes to field goals this year. Scores 19-3. Los Angeles still in the third. Kilmer finds a Bramlitz, and he is in the end zone. 21-yard touchdown strike. And the score now is 19-10. Los Angeles. We're in the fourth. Roman Gabriel is picked off again. Hugo Hollis returns it to the Los Angeles 42. Uh, late in the fourth, Roman Gabriel again back to pass. He's looking and uh, he is picked off again. Uh, not a good day for Roman Gabriel. 335 in the fourth, Billy Kilmer looking to uh, get a score here and they do. Again, Danny Abramowitz, he uh, gets his second touchdown of the day. And that will uh, make it a two-point game with uh, just seconds left in the game. Kilmer trying a uh, home run shot, and the veteran Richie Pettibone picks him off, returns it back to the uh, Los Angeles 41. I think this is going to be your ball game, folks. And it is. Well, New Orleans puts a bit of a scare in the uh, Rams, but the Rams come away with the uh, victory, 1917 in uh, the Coliseum. Your MVP of the game, uh, Deacon Jones. Uh, five tackles, and one of them was a safety uh, and uh, two sacks. Game stats, uh, the edge going to LA. But uh, Roman Gabriel today, uh, rough game for him. Turned the ball over three times through the air. Let's look at New Orleans in, in a losing effort. Uh, Billy Kilmer, 21 to 36, 229, two TDs and an interception. Better days are coming for Billy Kilmer. He will eventually get traded to Washington and be a, a part of that uh, George Allen over the hill gang for years in Washington and will be very successful with them. Barrington, uh, he led the way on the ground for the Saints, 32 yards, not much to write home about. He did uh, lose a fumble to the Rams. 
Danny uh, Abramowitz, uh, 133 yards and two touchdowns today. He was such a good receiver. And uh, total offense for New Orleans in a uh, losing effort to the Rams. They, they uh, gave the Rams a scare, but came up short. New Orleans defense, uh, Hugo Hollis, nine tackles and an interception. Dave Long got, uh, got to Roman Gabriel twice. Dave Rowe got to him once. Interceptions by Hollis, Wyatt, and Morgan. Tom Dempsey, good day for uh, for him. Fagan's punting numbers for the day, a uh, nice 61 yard punt. That uh, was uh, inside the 20 and probably fair caught. Al Dodd and Ken Burroughs returning punts. Al Dodd did get a uh, return back for 29 yards. Uh, all fair catches today in the uh, punt return game for the uh, Saints. Now let's look at LA. Well, not a great game for Roman Gabriel. 26 of 39, 327 yards. That's the good. The one touchdown is a good. The three interceptions were not. He was sacked three times for 21 yards. Les Josephson, uh, he led the way with 48 yards on the ground, but Willie Ellison, he did get in the end zone for the uh, one rushing score. Jack Snow, another great day for the uh, Rams receiver, 137 yards and a touchdown. Total offense for the Rams in a uh, tight affair with the Saint uh, with the New Orleans Saints. On defense, uh, Myron Patios, seven tackles, two for loss. Deacon Jones, big game for him. Uh, five tackles, four for loss. He uh, collected a sack safety, two sacks total. Coy Bacon picked up a sack. Interception uh, near the end of the game by R Richie Pettibone. Fumble recovery by uh, Jim Nettles. David Ray. 50% on his field goals. Pat Stud still, his uh, numbers today. And looking at uh, kick and punt returns, uh, Alvin Heyman, Kermit Alexander. Uh, Heyman, 35 yard return uh, was his longest. And uh, punt return numbers for Los Angeles in their victory over the uh, New Orleans Saints. Well, a two-point margin of victory for the uh, Los Angeles Rams at home. Now we move on to rainy Miami. So it'll be a slippery, slick day on that uh, Orange Bowl AstroTurf with the uh, Patriots visiting the uh, Dolphins. I'm sure they were hoping for sunny weather coming down from Boston, but they don't get that. More uh, salt in the wound for their uh, their season. 7.22 in the first. Bob Greasy pitches to uh, Jim Kick, and uh, the Dolphin running back is in for a touchdown. Miami up 7-0. 2.33 in the first. Jim Nance breaks away. And the big fullback for Boston rumbles in for a 36-yard touchdown run. We got a tie game here uh, in the second quarter. And even on the uh, slick playing surface, Garo Yepremian gets a 17-yard field goal. Miami up 10-7. Still in the second quarter. Greasy. Looking. Oh, and he is picked off by uh, Clarence Scott. He airmailed that one. What can Joe Cap do here in the waning uh, 
minutes of the uh, first half. Well, Jake Scott says he's not going to do a whole lot because Jake Scott picks off Joe Cap With 41 seconds left in the uh, first half, Jim Kick again. He runs that one in. 10-yard uh, touchdown run for Jim Kick. We're in the third quarter now. Dolphins driving and on the doorstep. And Jim Kick, a three-touchdown day for uh, the Miami halfback. 24-7 is your score here in the fourth. Bob Greasy sneaks it in from two yards to uh, add an additional seven points on. A 31-7 Miami lead. Jim Kick uh, gets through and he uh, fumbles the ball. Boston recovers. Well, we're uh, at the end of the fourth. And Miami in a uh, blowout, 31-7 uh, over the Patriots. Jim Kick obviously is going to be your MVP. He had it all going today. Uh, 161 yards rushing, three touchdowns, 44 yards receiving, and he uh, completed a halfback pass. Dominating game by uh, Miami. Uh, let's look at Boston's numbers. Uh, Joe Cap, 12 of 24, uh, whole 97 yards. An interception, no touchdowns. He was sacked three times for 21 yards. Jim Nance, uh, 95 yards, 36 of those were uh, on that touchdown run. Boston's receiving today, Bake Turner, 68 yards. Ron Sellers had 12 yards. I think that's the lowest he's had all season. Normally, Ron Sellers is the uh, go-to guy for Joe Cap. Miami played him well. Total offense numbers for uh, Boston in a uh, losing effort. And uh, Boston's defense was out there on the field a uh, good part of the day in the rain and Don Webb, in, in those conditions, uh, collected 10 tackles. Only the one interception by uh, Clarence Scott. And then uh, Webb picked up the fumble from Jim Kick. Gino uh, Capaletti, one extra point. Janik, uh, a busy day punting for Boston. 57-yarder in uh, less than ideal conditions in the... Orange Bowl. Odell Lawson and Carl Garrett returning kicks. Not much to speak of in the kick return game for Boston today in their blowout loss to the Dolphins. And uh, only a single fair catch for Boston in the punt return game. Let's look at Miami and their victory. Bob Greasy, 14 and 24, 221 yards, an interception, no touchdowns. Uh, Jim Kick, he completed one pass for 11 yards. That was a first down. Uh, Jim Kick, big day. Well, big day for the uh, Miami rushing game. They didn't have to rely on uh, Bob Greasy very much because Jim Kick, he got 161 yards and three touchdowns, and Larry Zonka tacked on 105 yards. Receiving Paul Warfield, he collected 95 yards of uh, receptions. And the uh, Miami total offense numbers, big day for Jim Kick. And uh, Miami just ran it uh, all day between uh, Kick and Zonka. Miami's defense, uh, Bonacani, 12 tackles. Uh, Jim Riley, he got two sacks today. Uh, Bill Stanfield got one as well. Jake Scott with that uh, drive-killing uh, interception near the end zone. Carol Upremian, perfect in the rain. Didn't seem to affect him at all. 
Uh, Larry uh, Seeple, he wasn't very busy today, but when he got in, uh, he did boot a 54-yard uh, punt. Mercury Morris had uh, one 28-yard kick return. And Jake Scott, 13-yard uh, punt return for him. So Miami, a victor over the, uh, well, might as well call it what it is, the hapless Boston Patriots, 31-7. to Looking at our next game, we move from uh, Florida to Minnesota, where we had pouring rain and 75 degrees. We now have 28 degrees and snow. Chicago at Minnesota to take on the Vikings. 9.58 in the first. Gary Quazo, the Vikings, he's back to pass, looks downfield, and uh, misses Gene Washington uh, on that pass. 7.03 in the first. Quazo driving, hands off to Dave Osborne, and the uh, Vikings uh, halfback. Gets in the end zone, 12-yard run. That'll put the Vikings up 7-0. Still in the first, Jack Cannon, And he connects with his receiver and uh, Farmer, George Farmer, 27-yard touchdown reception. And that'll tie the game at uh, 7. We're now in the second. Cannon is picked off by Charlie West. Don't know who he was thrown to there. That was an ugly pass. Still in the second, Quazo looking downfield in the snow. It's uh, flying pretty thick out there. And uh, Gene Washington, he uh, collects the pass and is in for the touchdown. 47 yard touchdown strike for the Vikings. Vikings up 14-7. Uh, Vikings kicking off to the Bears. Still in the second quarter. And Cecil Turner collects the ball, and he is going down the sideline. One man to beat. Oh, and, well, no, he actually gets uh, hit and fumbles the ball. And we're uh, at near the end of the second quarter. Fred Cox, he's good from nine yards. 17-7, Minnesota. At the end of the second quarter, Ronnie Bull runs it in for the Bears to uh, cut the deficit by uh, seven. It's now a three-point game. Gene Washington, however, says, no, nope. no, nope, we're not going to go with that. He collects a touchdown pass at the end of the second quarter, 24-14, Minnesota. Concanon with seconds remaining in the first half. He's looking downfield, and it is really blowing out there. And Dick Gordon comes up with the catch. 24-21, we're in the third. Kakanen and uh, Kasalki steps in front of that one and intercepts uh, Kakanen. Takes it to the Chicago 26. Freddie Cox will uh, kick that one through. We now have a 27-21 ball game here in the third quarter. With 4.42 in the third, the Bears are uh, moving the ball. Don Shy, uh, he's hit, and Carl Eller recovers and trips. Oh, he had an open field, and uh, Eller just tripped there in the snow, and, uh, well, they did get the uh, fumble recovery. Freddie Cox will kick that one through to uh, extend the margin. We're now looking at 30-21. We're in the fourth. Dick Gordon catches the ball, and uh, he converts that uh, fourth down. So the Bears are trying to get down there, and they do, but uh, we'll have to settle for a field goal. And that is good. So 34, or 30, 24, Minnesota. 
So in the snow, uh, Minnesota comes up with a 32-24 victory over the rival uh, Chicago Bears. Looking at the game stats. Yep. Good day for Minnesota. Looking at the uh, Bears, uh, Jack and Cannon, 22 of 38, 306 yards. Uh, the Bears quarterback was uh, was pretty pass happy today. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, the Chicago rushing game, not much here. 34 yards for Don Shy, but of course, uh, Ronnie Bull ran one in for a touchdown. Dick Gordon, a uh, good game for him. 80 yards in the snow and a touchdown. George Farmer, he uh, had 79 yards and a touchdown. 65 yards from uh, Don Shy out of the uh, backfield. Chicago's total offense and their uh, loss to Minnesota. And Chicago's defense. Joe Taylor, he had seven tackles on the day. One sack by George Seals. Mac Percival uh, didn't find it difficult kicking in the uh, in the snow. And uh, Bobby Joe Green, his uh, punting line and the loss to the Vikings. On kick returns, uh, Cecil Turner had a nice return at 32 yards. Now punt returns, uh, not much going there. Minnesota, Gary Quazzo's day, 18 to 36, 347 yards. He was uh, slinging it as well. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. A good day for the uh, Vikings quarterback. Dave Osborne, another uh, solid game on the ground. He was the uh, Minnesota running attack. 90 yards and a touchdown. And uh, obviously Minnesota was moving it through the uh, snow in the air. Bob Grimm, 171 yards. Gene Washington, 145 yards and two touchdowns. The uh, starting uh, wide receivers for uh, the Vikings had a, uh, a very busy day. Total offense uh, for Minnesota. And look at the Minnesota defense. Wally Hilgenberg, he had eight tackles today. Jim Marshall collected a sack. Kasalki. Uh, an interception, Charlie West an interception, and then of course Carl Eller uh, picking up that uh, fumble and had an open field in front of him and just tripped over himself in the snow and uh, oh, that had to be disappointing for him. He had the, nothing between him and the uh, goal line and he just slipped. Fred Cox, uh, good day uh, for him in the snow and uh, cold of Metropolitan Stadium. Tom McNeil. Decent day punting for him. And on uh, kick returns, uh, Charlie West only had one kick return for 35 yards. And only seven uh, yards was his longest return, his only return on uh, punts. Okay, now we uh, we have an uh, a uh, old AFL matchup between the uh, Raiders and the Jets in Shea Stadium. Eight thirty nine in the first. Daryl Lamonica uh, tries a screen pass, and uh, Hicks of the Jets steps in front of that one, picks it off. Well, the Jets look like they're going to get a field goal here. Jim Turner, he uh, kicks that one through. Uh, Jets are up 3-0 here in the second quarter. 
Still in the second quarter, Blanda is going to uh, try to tie the game. And he does. 38 yard field goal is good for George Blanda. We have a tie game at three here in the second quarter. In the waning seconds of the uh, first half, Blanda hits another long field goal to make it 6-3 Oakland over the uh, Jets. At 15 seconds left, and uh, in the first half in Warren Wells, he gets into the end zone for Oakland. 13-3 uh, here in the third quarter. Blanda trying another long field goal. And the uh, veteran quarterback place kicker is good. Blanda is booting those through. Now we're in the fourth quarter. Blanda again lines up a field goal. And he misses the uh, short field goal. A minute 54 left in the game. Blanda, oh, and his field goal attempt is blocked. Boy, that was a long field goal for George Blanda. It's blocked out of bounds. 23 seconds. Woodall is looking for Eddie Bell, and he finds the uh, small receiver. 13-yard uh, touchdown catch and run. Onside kick tried for the Jets. Everybody piles onto it, and New York recovers it at the uh, 49. And last gap for the Jets. Woodall has uh, got protection, but everybody's back for uh, Oakland protecting against the pass. And now oh, he just uh, missed Emerson Boozer on that. That will be your game. Oakland gets a 16-10 victory over the Jets. Warren Wells, three catches, 64 yards, and a touchdown is your uh, MVP. And look at the game stats of Oakland. Oakland really uh, performed well today, even though it was a tight score. Darrell Monica was 14 to 27 for the Raiders. He had a touchdown and an interception, 182 yards passing. Uh, Dixon and Smith uh, combined for. Uh, Looks like 105 yards, 51 yards for Dixon, 54 for Charlie Smith. Fred Belitnikoff had 62 yards, Warren Wells 64 and a touchdown. And total offense for Oakland in their victory over the Jets. Jets are slumping. Oakland's uh, defense today, uh, Dan Connors, eight tackles. Uh, Tony Klein, he got a sack. Uh, ben Davidson, uh, again, continues to just be the bane of uh, the uh, existence of any Jet quarterback. There's plenty of footage uh, during the a AFL days of uh, Ben Davidson trying to decapitate Joe Namath. Uh, so uh, the villainous Ben Davidson gets... Uh, Gets a sack. George Blanda, uh, he had a big day today. Uh, he missed two field goals, but uh, one of them was blocked. But he was he was hitting them from way out. Uh, his one miss was, you know, it, a chip shot in comparison to the attempts he was making today. But uh, good day by uh, George Blanda. Mike Eishide, he had four punts today. Atkinson and Alvin Wyatt, they each returned a kick uh, for 29 yards. Uh, Ron Sh uh, Rod Sherman had a 45-yard uh, punt return. Now let's look over at uh, New York and their losing effort against the uh, Oakland Raiders. Al Woodall... 18 to 39, 181 yards and a touchdown. Uh, really nothing going on on the ground here. Uh, 
Al, Al Woodall was uh, doing a lot of running today, probably under pressure from that uh, Oakland defense. Receiving uh, George Sauer, 46 yards. Uh, Eddie Bell, he uh, got a touchdown reception. Total offense for the uh, Jets and a losing effort at home against the uh, Oakland Raiders. On defense, uh, Al Atkinson, 11 tackles and a sack. Hicks, uh, an interception. That is about it for New York on the defensive side of the ball. Jim Turner, always reliable, and today was no different. Steve O'Neill, busy day punting, nine punts. A long of 44, and uh, got uh, five of the nine inside the 20. Battle in uh, McLean, returning kicks for the Jets. Bell and Battle uh, returning punts today in the loss to Oakland at home. Well, 16-10 is your score at the end of the day there in Shea. Moving on, uh, we're in New York. Uh, the Battle of New York. The... Uh, Battle of East and West, or Northwest, Buffalo, uh, heading into Yankee Stadium to play the uh, New York Football Giants. 11 minutes in the first, uh, Dennis Shaw back to pass for the Bills, and he is picked off. Willie Williams, he grabs that uh, interception at the New York 31. Tarkington under center for the Giants. He's looking. Oh, he's got uh, Clifton McNeil in the end zone. Touchdown, Giants. He's in the second quarter now, Tarkington hands off to Tucker Fredrickson, and the fullback uh, gets in the end zone. Four-yard plunge. Extends the uh, lead 14-0 New York. Guthrie trying a field goal. And he gets that one. 20 yard attempt is good. 14 3, Giants. Still in the third, Tarkington. And he finds his receiver, Rich Houston, in the end zone. Five yard touchdown pass. And uh, the Giants are starting to pull away. 21 3. We're now in the fourth. Shaw looking downfield. That looks like an overthrow, and it is. Spider Lockhart had that locked down. Uh, 447 in the fourth. Tarkington has the uh, Giants inside the uh, 10, and Ron Johnson bowls his way in for a touchdown. 27 3 late in the fourth. Shaw looking. And he finds Marlon Briscoe, but Briscoe fumbles the ball after he catches it. Uh, New York recovers at the 48. Tarkington hands off to Ron Johnson. He turns the corner and he fumbles the ball. At this point, uh, the Giants have it well in hand. The Giants will get the victory today in Yankee Stadium. 27-3. Uh, Buffalo goes down to the uh, New York Giants. Fred Dreyer, our sack leader in the uh, 1970 NFL replay. He, uh, all four of his tackles for sacks today. Fred Dreyer is just blowing up this, uh, this replay uh, on defense. Looking at the stats, domination by uh, the Giants. Uh, Dennis Shaw, 20 of 37, 181 yards. He was uh, throwing because they were behind an interception. And uh, Buffalo could not get anything really generated on the ground. O.J. Simpson, your leader, with 33 yards on seven rushes. Through the air, um, out of the backfield, O.J. had uh, 57 yards. Marlon Briscoe, 66. 
by Glosson 34, and uh, that is uh, your Buffalo Air Attack. Buffalo's total offense and a loss to the uh, Giants in uh, Yankee Stadium. On defense, uh, Edgar Chandler again leading the way with 12 tackles. Uh, Paul Guidry, the veteran linebacker, he uh, ends up with a sack. Uh, Ron McDole, the dancing bear, he gets a sack. Uh, Captain Mike Stratton, he uh, picks up the fumble. Guthrie's day, uh, just a field goal for him. Uh, McGuire, six punts. Longest was 40. On the kick return game for uh, Buffalo and their losing effort. And punt returns. Let's look at the victorious New York Giants. Fran Tarkington, 16 to 29, 140 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. A good day for uh, Sir Francis. Ron Johnson, another good day running the ball, 104 yards and a touchdown. Tucker Fredrickson, he chips in a touchdown. And uh, France spread the ball around. Uh, Clifton McNeil, 40 yards, he's your leader. McNeil and Rich Houston uh, with the touchdowns. Total offense for the uh, New York Giants. And we're going to see that big day by Freddie Dreyer. Uh, they, they got after uh, Dennis Shaw today. Six total sacks for, uh, for Fred Dreyer, two for Jerry Shea. Willie Williams collected an uh, interception, and Tom Longo picked up a fumble. Pete Gogolak missed an extra point. Phil Johnson only five punts today. Uh, three of them were inside the 20, and those were fair caught. Single kick return for 20 yards for Bobby Duhon. And Duhon, uh, longest punt return was 34, uh, 35 yards. Twenty-seven, three victory uh, for the New York Giants over their interstate rivals, the Buffalo Bills. Well, now we're uh, traveling to Three River Stadium, where it's raining, it's a uh, little chilly, and Green Bay is facing off against Pittsburgh, the old NFL dynasty, facing the up-and-coming new uh, AFC dynasty. 11.51 in the first, Bart Starr back for the Packers. And uh, incomplete pass to Spillis. That'll stop the drive. Pittsburgh, Brad Chandra center. He looks, he double pumps, and he hits Ronnie Shanklin in the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Man, uh, Bradshaw just froze uh, the uh, Green Bay defense with that pump. Now, Ronnie Shanklin, he catches the ball again, and it looks like Ronnie Shanklin... Uh, he gets down to the 21, he's tackled, and he fumbles the ball. Green Bay recovers at the 22. Minute uh, 52 in the second quarter, Bart Starr trying to get something going and uh, gets something going the wrong way. Lee Calland uh, picks Starr off. We're now in the third quarter. Bradshaw has them uh, on the four-yard line, and he scrambles in for a four-yard touchdown. Terry Bradshaw muscles his way in uh, and extends the score 14-0 Pittsburgh. Preston Pearson catches the screen and he is off to the races. Preston Pearson, 43-yard catch and run from Terry Bradshaw. Puts the Steelers up 21-0. We're in the fourth quarter now. Bart Starr looking downfield. And he overthrows, and uh, it's picked off by uh, Jerry Hildebrand. 3.52 in the fourth. Bradshaw hands off to Preston Pearson. 
and he gets his way through first down oh but he fumbles he's tackled and fumbled green bay recovers at the 13. with uh less than a minute left in the game travis williams tries to get into the end zone and he is tackled green bay their last chance bart star looking he finds the veteran carol dale in the back of the end zone touchdown green bay does get on the board too little too late here in the fourth quarter for the uh packers and steelers get a 21 to 7 victory over the packers terry bradshaw big day for him uh, 236 yards uh, passing, two TDs, and he did uh, get in the end zone on that uh, quarterback sneak. It was all Pittsburgh today. Bart Starr was under pressure, harassed, harried, and sacked. Next to no running game for uh, Green Bay against the uh, Steel Curtain defense. Uh, rough day for Bart Starr, 23 of 43, 290, a touchdown, two interceptions. And he was sacked four times. And that had to hurt on that uh, AstroTurf. Donnie Anderson, only 54 yards rushing, leading the way for the Packers in a losing effort. <coughs> Receiving, Carol Dale, big day for him, 209 yards and a touchdown. But that's, uh, he just couldn't generate anything against that uh, Pittsburgh defense. Total offense for Green Bay. They were passing it more because they got down uh, early and were trying to climb out of that hole. So Bart Starr was uh, passing more than he probably is comfortable with. On defense, Fred Carr and Ray Nitschke. Uh, we're busy today with seven tackles each. No sacks. Uh, two fumble recovers, one by Willie Wood and one by Al Matthews. Dale Livingston only had an extra point attempt uh, today in a losing effort. Donnie Anderson, another good day punting, although he was busy doing that. Kick returns. Uh, Larry Krause had a 41-yard uh, kick return. Uh, Green Bay's punt returners and their loss to Pittsburgh. Looking at Pittsburgh, the MVP, Terry Bradshaw, 15 to 25. Good day for him, which is going to make Chuck Knoll happy. Uh, he got two touchdowns. He did not turn the ball over. Uh, Johnny Fuqua and Preston Pearson, kind of the two headed monster, 51 yards rushing for Fuqua. 54 for Preston Pearson. Terry Bradshaw, uh, he tacks on 33 yards and a uh, touchdown. Ron Shanklin, good day for Ron Shanklin. 78 yards and a touchdown. Preston Pearson, he collected a touchdown. A 43-yard catch and run. And your uh, total offense numbers for the uh, victorious Pittsburgh Steelers. Looking at the Steeler uh, defense, Chuck Allen and Andy Russell, seven tackles each. Joe Green, he got a sack. Ben McGee got a sack. Jerry Hildebrandt got a sack. Uh, Hildebrandt picked off uh, Bart Starr, as did uh, Lee Calhand. Gene Mingo only did extra points today, so we didn't see the usual Gene Mingo performance of missing field goals. I hate to be harsh, but uh, he has cost Pittsburgh games this season. Uh, and it's probably uh, costing Chuck Knoll what little Harry has left. Bobby Walden, uh, always a solid punter, was busy today with seven punts. Five of those were inside the 20. Staggers and Blount uh, kicking, uh, doing kick returns. Uh, Bryant and Staggers punt returns lots of fair catches today
And that'll wrap up uh, the game in uh, Pittsburgh. The uh, struggles for the Pat Packers uh, continue this season. And uh, Pittsburgh, uh, for a young team and uh, kind of transitioning from some of their older players to their young players, and they're just a draft away from just getting a haul of players that's just going to uh, turn the corner for Pittsburgh. A good performance for, uh, for a young team. Well, we're down to our last two games. Cincinnati traveling to San Diego. Nice day for football out in uh, San Diego Stadium. Five fifteen in the first, and the uh, Chargers are driving. Dicky Post takes the uh, the toss, and he is in for a touchdown. And that will put San Diego up seven nothing here in the first. Virgil Carter goes on a quarterback scramble and uh, is hit, fumbles the ball, and San Diego recovers on the 44. A minute 40 in the first. Mercer gets a chip shot field goal. Now our score is 10 to nothing, San Diego. Second quarter now, Horst Mullman. His field goal will be good. Cincinnati collects three points, making it a 10 to three game. Still in the second, John Hadel back to pass. He's looking and uh, looks like he's going for Lance Allworth and Lamar Parrish just picked that one off. 450 in the second, Virgil Carter leading the Bengals down the field. Oh, and he's got a man and he gets through the uh, San Diego defense. Chip Myers, 28-yard uh, touchdown reception from Virgil Carter. And that's going to tie us up at 10. Late in the, in the uh, first half, Ken Riley, he picks off Hadel. And he's off to the races and is tackled at the 9, it looks like. So with just uh, less than two minutes left, that sets up uh, Cincinnati to get a score. Will they... Uh, will they uh, Get a touchdown here. And they do. Chip Myers gets his second touchdown of the day. Now it's 17-10 Cincinnati with five seconds left in the first half. Uh, Molman just comes up short on that one. 52-yarder and uh, he, he didn't even get it there. We're now in the third and uh, Cincinnati converts the uh, short fourth down. 10-30 in the third. Mullman lining up another field goal. Let's we'll see if he can do better. And he does. 37-yard attempt is good. And uh, Cincinnati extends our lead out 20-10. Third quarter action still. Virgil Carter back. And he is picked off. Jim Hill... Of San Diego picks him off at the San Diego 39. We're now uh, at the end of the third quarter. Another Molman field goal. This one a long one. And uh, that one looks like that goes through. 47-yard Molman field goal is good. Cincinnati 23. San Diego 10. We're now in the fourth. John Hadel. He finds Gene Foster. And they uh, convert that uh, fourth and long. And uh, Hadel's still under center for uh, San Diego. He's looking downfield. He's got Gary Garrison, and the ghost is in the end zone. Gary Garrison, 17-yard touchdown pass from John Hadel. That's going to make it 23-7. Late in the fourth, Lance Allworth gets the pass and uh, takes it down to what looks like the 8-yard line. Let's, uh, what is San Diego going to do here late in the fourth? They give it to Dickey Post and the uh, halfback scampers into the end zone. See if the extra point's good. And it is. Oh, one point game. San Diego comes back and uh, gets the victory at home. What an exciting game.
the Chargers come from behind to eke out a win 24-23 over the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Dickie Post is your MVP. Uh, not much on the yardage, but uh, two TDs. Let's look at the stats. Close game. Virgil Carter, his day in the losing effort, 15 to 35, 163 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Jess Phillips and uh, Virgil Carter were the run game today for Cincinnati. 49 yards for Phillips, 43 for Virgil Carter. On the uh, receiving side of things, Chip Myers, 60 yards and two touchdowns, big day for him. Bob Trumpy, 78 yards. And here is your Bengals offense. In a losing effort against the uh, San Diego Chargers in San Diego. Bill Berge was your uh, leader in tackles for the Bengals today. Avery had a sack. And uh, the two outstanding cornerbacks for... The Bengals, Ken Riley and Lamar Parrish, they each uh, picked off Hadel. Horst Molman, he did miss that field goal, uh, and he missed it badly. It was just short, uh, but just a, generally a good, solid uh, performance by, by Molman. Dave Lewis, his punting line for the day and the loss to San Diego. Robinson Lamar Parrish returning kicks. Uh, Cincinnati punt return numbers in the uh, the loss. Let's look at the uh, come from behind victorious San Diego Chargers. John Hadel, 20 of 39, 256 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. Uh, not a great day. Looking at rushing, uh, Jeff Queen, the fullback, 51 yards on the ground. Uh, Dickie Post, only 20 yards, but uh, two touchdowns. Lance Allworth, 68 yards receiving. Willie Frazier, the tight end, 72. Gary Garrison, 60 yards on the day and uh, a touchdown. Total offense for San Diego, and they're come from behind. One point victory over the Cincinnati Bengals. On defense, Babich and Tolbert uh, led the way with eight tackles. Jim Owens sacked Virgil Carter twice. Jim Hill intercepted Virgil Carter and Jack Protz. He uh, picked up a fumble. Mike Mercer, uh, solid day by the veteran kicker. Dennis Partee, uh, it's a, not a bad day for the veteran uh, punter for San Diego. Speedy Duncan's day uh, returning uh, kicks. 21 yards was his longest return. Fletcher and Smith on punt returns. Now we go to Atlanta and San Francisco. Our final game of the day in uh, Kizar Stadium. Ten fifteen in the first, and uh, John Brody under center. He drops back. He's looking. He's under pressure, and he is picked off. Ken Reeves steps in front of the uh, Brody pass uh, at the Atlanta twenty-nine. Still in the first, Brody takes the snap again. He's looking downfield, and uh, well, he overthrows everybody except for uh, Redmond of the. Uh, Falcons and he returns it all the way back to the 32. Rudy Redman on a nice uh, interception and return. That sets up uh, Bob Barry and Cannonball Butler for a touchdown. And that is going to put Atlanta up 
Six to nothing. They missed the extra point. 421 in the second quarter. And Brody connects with uh, Gene Washington. And that will get the uh, San Francisco 49ers on the board. And they missed the uh, extra point. So it's a 6 6 tie. Gossett with a longish field goal. And that one goes through. 38 yard. Uh, Field goal by Bruce Cossett will uh, add on three, so it's 9-6 San Diego. We're at the end of the uh, first half, and Gossett gets a uh, chip shot that'll uh, make it 12-6. We're now in the third. Oh! Ken Vineyard, wide left on a short field goal. We're late in the third quarter. Cannonball Butler turns the corner and is hit. Fumbles the ball. San Francisco recovers at the 35. Uh, they can't generate anything, so uh, Gossett comes in to get three, and he does. 15-6 is your score right now. As the third quarter wraps up, we're now in the fourth. Bob Barry looking. And uh, he's picked off. I think that's uh, Jimmy Johnson that's got the ball, and he runs that one down the sideline. Touchdown, San Francisco. Twenty-two six. Still in the fourth. Barry gets Snyder. Snyder uh, gets by the uh, San Francisco defender in the end zone. Todd Snyder, nineteen-yard catch, and that will uh, make our score. 22-13 in the fourth. Barry has got the uh, Falcons down there again and connects with Gail Cogdill. Now we're, the game's tightening up. 22-20 uh, San Francisco. The fans are uh, nervous in uh, Kizar Stadium, especially when Tom, Tommy Nobis picks off uh, Brody. Ken Vineyard for the uh, go-ahead field goal. And that one's good. With 27 seconds left in the game, Atlanta comes back. Brody, one last shot. And he's picked off. Oh. Atlanta's defense comes up big today. Still 23 22 in the waning seconds of the fourth quarter. And that is your game. The Falcons come back and stun the 49ers at home. Falcons 23, San Francisco 22. Man, week 12 has been a week of tight games. Bob Barry is your MVP. 163 yards and two touchdowns uh, for the Falcons quarterback. And here's your numbers on the uh, Falcon come from behind last second win over the 49ers Bob Barry's day 15 to 38 163 yards two touchdowns and interception Harmon Wagens and uh, Cannonball Butler good day running the ball the two-headed Falcon rushing attack 79 yards for the fullback uh, wages and 89 yards for Cannonball Butler and a touchdown. Looking at uh, Atlanta's uh, receiving numbers, Snyder 72 yards and a touchdown. Gail Cogdill, his only catch was a touchdown. Total offense for the uh, Cardiac Falcons. Looking at defense, big day for Tommy Nobis. Nine tackles and an interception that that absolutely was the uh, dagger in the heart of uh, San Francisco. Ken Reeves interception. McCauley and Redmond interceptions off of Brody. Vineyard missed a field goal. And an extra point. Normally he's pretty steady. Lothridge, uh, six punts today. Butler and Campbell returning kicks. 
Mallory McCauley returning punts for the Falcons. And that wraps up your week 12 with another tight victory. And this one, a come from behind shocker. Falcons 23, Niners 22. Well, that was quite a week. Let's go look at our standings now. Now we're, uh, we have two weeks remaining in the season. St. Louis, uh, still atop nine and three, but the uh, Giants, they're, they're making their move. Cowboys, too little, too late. Minnesota, slight edge over Detroit. I think at some point Detroit's uh, Milt Schmidt, their coach, is going to have to uh, make a uh, decision on Munson or Landry because Landry isn't getting anything done through the air. They're totally reliant on their uh, running game, and that's going to make them uh, easy to defend here coming up. Uh, in the playoffs if they uh, make the playoffs. Los Angeles 9-2-1 uh, leading in the uh, NFC West. Atlanta uh, and San Francisco in second. And we look in the AFC, the East. Baltimore up uh, in a tie with Miami. Miami has won five in a row. In the uh, AFC Central, Pittsburgh, uh, they're they're pulling away from Cincinnati. Cincinnati could not afford a loss, and uh, yeah, they, they they ended up in a in a loss there to the Chargers. And now looking out west, we have Oakland has uh, jumped past Kansas City after Kansas City's just horrendous performance today. Um, Len Dawson just giving the ball over. Ed Podolak giving the ball over. Uh, just a, a horrible performance by Kansas City. And now they are out of first place. Uh, Denver uh, close behind. Uh, too little, too late uh, for San Diego in their win. Well, that'll do it. Uh, thank you for watching. Week 12 will be on to week 13 pretty soon. Uh, things are starting to firm up. We're getting an idea who's uh, going to make the playoffs. It looks like it's going to, it may end up being an interesting uh, race for a few teams here in the last couple weeks of the season. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. We're, uh, we're going to be wrapping up soon. I was actually thinking about getting through the playoffs so you know simming the highlights of the playoffs but actually doing a broadcast from start to finish of the Super Bowl let me know what you think in the comments if you'd like to see the Super Bowl played out or just see highlights again like and subscribe I really appreciate everybody who's been subscribing to the channel um, I plan to do more with pro strategy football and other games uh, I you know I'm a big sports sim fan, so Out of the Park Baseball 23, uh, Franchise Hockey Manager, uh, their their new version, version 8, should be coming out soon. I'd like to uh, do a, a season replay there uh, as well. And then, of course, um, you have Draft Day Sports Pro Football. Uh, that'll be coming out soon, the new version of that. And then also the new version of their uh, pro basketball games. So... Uh, a lot of uh, content that uh, is available. So we will see uh, how things go here with the end of this season and this replay. And then I'm probably going to move to uh, a different sport and a different sport sim uh, for the uh, the next go around and the and the the next chapter in uh, in the YouTube channel. So again, thank you everyone. And uh, I cut this on a Friday. 
So everyone have a good weekend. Uh, enjoy the NFL games on Sunday. And I will see you all back in week 13 of the 1970 NFL season replay.